Hi, I'm John, the Community Currency Engineer Termel, and this is part two of the story of the California IOUs, where state lawmakers back bill to make IOUs legal tender to save their state. But the bottom line is that the IOU plan in its current form will further hurt the poor. The simple, ah, but it's going to allow the money marts to make a commission on cashing those things. The simple act of allowing them to be used for tax purposes would reduce the disadvantage considerably. So as Sean Carmody wrote, Bill, it would be a fascinating experience if California did actually do as you suggest and accept the warrants for tax liabilities. While I agree that having currency accepted by the governments for tax is a necessary condition for the currency to become more widely used, I can't help feeling that it's not necessarily sufficient. So I'd love to see a real example played out. Then Bill says, we should start a petition to request the state does make the IOU tax empowered, and then we would be able to satisfy our curiosity. Well, look at what happened in Argentina, and you'll get your answer already. It is a perfect chance to empirically demonstrate and validate some modern money concepts that were demonstrated and validated in Argentina. And finally, I left my message saying, too bad they won't accept it for state taxes, too bad they're too big to use as local currency, and too bad that the Californians are too stupid to follow the Argentinians' example. Now, next day he wrote a letter to the governor of California, and it was on July the 1st, 2009. says, Dear Governor Schwarzenegger, I noted that the state of California is planning to issue IOUs, registered warrants, from tomorrow, July 2nd, to ease our ca your cash situation in the face of the political dispute you're having over the budget with the Democrats. My latest blog, California IOUs are not currency, but they could be, analyzes this situation and suggests that you tax empower these IOUs, a move that will radically enhance the options available to you. You can read the blog here, and I just read it to you. In summary, it would be economic madness to start cutting your deficit now, given the extent of labor market deterioration your state is currently enduring. The present plan to issue IOUs will hurt the most disadvantaged members of your community because the warrants will not be readily tradable. And it is unclear whether the banks will be prepared to hold them for the interest payment on redemption, that is cash them. You can easily eliminate this disadvantage by making the IOUs eligible for payment of Californian state taxes and fines. This one change to your current plan will allow you to create your own sovereign currency and the IOUs will become widely accepted within the community. And without, they'd be accepted in, in Nevada and in Oregon and neighboring states. Sure they would. California dollars? I'll take them in Canada. You want to come spend a night in Bradford? I'll find you someone who will take 50 California green dollars to let you stay here. Even those who are not directly being paid in IOUs would be happy to hold them because they would realize they could extinguish their tax obligations to your government using them. You could then use these IOUs forever for state purchases as a substitute for the U.S. dollar and avoid issuing more debt. You will also be able to directly employ the 2.1 million California citizens who are currently unemployed with the IOUs and start using this idle labor to advance public purpose via community development projects. If you need any further advice on this, please do not hesitate to contact me. Best wishes, Bill William F. Mitchell. And of course, I sent my post to him saying, too bad Californians are too stupid to do it right. So now, continuing on, still July the 1st, California IOUs may be difficult to cash in. Well, not if they're legal tender that you can pay your taxes with, right? And in another article, July 1st, Schwarzenegger declares fiscal emergency in California. And, of course, John the Engineer to the rescue. The banking systems engineer. And then Schwarzenegger orders third furlough day, proposes new cuts. So, he doesn't have to if he used the Argentinian idea to pay his employees with state IOUs. Out of cash, California turns to IOUs July 1st, New American Media, and it's, it's ridiculous, said Terry McGinnis, director of Lion Martin Health Services in San Francisco's Castro District, a community clinic with a specific emphasis 
on health care. I don't get an I to IOU my staff or use the IOUs to pay our lab fees. There's a gap in logic about our providing medical services to our patients and then the state not paying for them. There's not a bank that's willing to lend against this IOU, McGinnis said. What's an IOU from the state of California at a time when everyone's laughing at our budget? Well, it's pretty good money if you can spend it and pay your employees with it, as you demand. No IOUs for California politicians. They're still getting cash. How sad, eh? Talk about not showing any faith in your own currency. California IOUs could make it harder for local governments to borrow. And, of course, you want local governments to be able to go get in debt, too. But then, of course... Why do they have to go borrow if they can use California IOUs too? Why don't they use them as well to put their people to work? California IOUs have value if applied to state obligations. Yes, we know that, he says. State Assembly Bill 1506, if passed, would allow recipients of the IOUs from the state of California to use those IOUs to pay any obligations owed. Yes, good stuff. Fight for it. And in commentaries from Reuters News, Bank of America to accept California IOUs. Good stuff. Why not? And then why one state agency won't accept California IOUs? The state would like banks and others to accept IOUs as a form of payment, but one state agency, the Board of Equalization, will not accept IOUs as payment for sales tax. They want cash. Although a state code expressly allows individuals and businesses to pay their state income taxes with state-issued IOUs, there's no provision allowing retailers to pay their sales tax with IOUs. Well, you know who the first civil servants who are going to be laid off should be? These guys. And then July 6th, California prints its own currency, a satire. Um... And uh, by Lionel, says, satire or not, the idea of a complimentary currency may be just the ticket to help us out. Suppose a college student in need of financial aid for community college in lieu of state grants or loans, the state issues a currency commensurate to the amount of hours the student volunteers to care for the elderly. Two birds, one stone. In essence, the state acts as a trader broker between two markets. California prints its own IOU? A currency? Question mark. Good idea, Lionel. Then, an article from Grandinite, As California Goes, and it mentions the bonds used in Argentina. So, from Granadite.com, an Alberta blog by an economist. So, he says, the California IOUs to avoid bond default? And he says, it might be useful to look up the phrase Pepecon, which refers to the IOUs issued by the largest province in Argentina just four months before it collapsed in 2001. Now, that's before Argentina collapsed, not the state of Buenos Aires, where we issued the IOUs. And these are interest-bearing bonds that were issued, not the no-interest type that were issued in the middle 80s, which worked better, actually. So, the Patagon, officially called Letra de Tesoreria para Cancelación de Obligación de la Provincia de Buenos Aires, way to cancel your debts to the province, was a bond issued by the government of the province of Buenos Aires, Argentina, during 2001. The Patagons were used to pay government bills, including state employees' salaries, during a period when the economic crisis caused regular currency, Argentine pesos, to be scarce. The Patacons then circulated in the economy in much the same way as pesos. First issued during the peso U.S. dollar convertibility regime, just like other complementary currency, Patacons could be attractive due to a revenue scheduled for repayment in 2003 in pesos with a little bit of interest. When the convertibility was abandoned amid fears of hyperinflation, the attractive of this revenue practically disappeared. The basis for the acceptability of complementary currency shifted to their use to pay taxes, which is always the best use for complementary currency. However, the value of petacons became eroded. Oh, you can pay less taxes with them? <laughs> as the Series B was issued because, as a way to put pressure on the government to cancel a large debt, the company that printed them eliminated many safety features deemed too expensive, thus making them easy to counterfeit. So, 
The Pentacons didn't work well because they didn't do them well enough to avoid counterfeiting. All you got to do is solve the counterfeiting problem by making all your large transactions electronic and only using the Pentacons for small transactions, right? The economic importance of Buenos Aires province ensured the acceptability of Pentacons because there were plenty of large companies that found use for them as payment of provincial charges. Just like California is the largest state in the U.S., same applies there. Pentacons were accepted outside the Buenos Aires province and eventually circulated, albeit informally, in border areas of neighboring countries. Neighboring countries, not just neighboring provinces. If we look at this event as a milestone or tombstone in financial collapse, it might be four months before California's mess filters through the rest of the economy. So, if you do Google for Patacons, Google for Patacons and Termel, and you'll get my article explaining how this happened. So,